following program is classified PG. Parental guidance is recommended for persons under 15 years. Get ready to match the stars. The very handsome and presentable Barry Creighton. The beautiful, the charismatic Nolene Brown. Dave Gray. Peggy Tufano. Stuart Wagstaff. And John Paul Young. As we play Graham Kennedy's Blankety Blanks. And now, here he is, the man who could never be two-faced. If he could, he wouldn't be wearing the one he's got now, Graham Kennedy. I don't think I cared for that. What did you say? Uh, the two-faced Graham Kennedy? Yeah, if he was what? If he was two-faced, he wouldn't be wearing the one he's got now. <laughs> Cheeky. Don't touch me. <laughs> Look me straight in the face. Yes. <laughs> now. Oh, oh, they liked it when I hit you. They liked it. I didn't mind it either. Got a whip. Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we know how to entertain Don Blake. <laughs> the leather boots. Barry Creighton, they said handsome and presentable. I would say salubrious. Oh, well, you can say that if you like. <laughs> Do you know what it means? We only just found out. Salubrious. Yeah. Well presented. Oh. Well, yes. You're well presented. Jolly good. Well Maybe presented yes. for a gentleman your age. <laughs> Hello, Nolene. I'd like to plug my record. Hey, Nolene. Yeah, what? Nothing. Um, oh, <laughs> what do you mean, nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, would you just stand up for a second? Just no. not all the way. See, there's a bit missing. Really? <laughs> what record? Well, I just realised everyone else was plugging records yesterday. Plug. Well, the Naked Vicar, and now we've got Son of Naked Vicar out on record and cassette. I didn't there know you that. There you go. 5 99 5 out now. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you've got a record out. Yes, I know. I ran from the gents' toilet to here in ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's called Grey and Spicy Boom Boom. Actually, I can't... I'd like the show to get over quick okay. tonight, if possible, because yeah, I, I have to go to my grandfather's 94th birthday party tonight. Your grandfather's 94? Oh, no, he died when he was 29. Oh, see, but, but was... you're going to his 94, <laughs> yes. just in case. Hello, Peggy. Hello, <laughs> Graham. Uh, once again with feeling. Of course, at the Manly Music Loft. At the Manly Music Loft. Yes. Stuart's not in anything. Nobody wants Stuart anymore. <laughs> I'm busy, oh. but it's all bits and pieces, hither and yon, you know. Isn't it busy. funny, Stuart, they, this must happen to you, especially you and Paul Hogan, and uh, to a lesser degree myself. People come up and say, what are you going to do now that you don't have any cigarette commercials? Like, as if that was our entire yeah. life. They used to take ten days of my year, perhaps. Yes, yeah. about three of mine, because yeah. I'm a quick learner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you amaze me. <laughs> John Paul Young has an album called Green, haven't you? Yes. On what label? Uh, Albert's, EMI. Oh, EMI, so look for that in your mm. shops. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you, man. Let's see what happened. Oh, Andrew Yeend is our champion with $100 and M-E-R-Y-L, Merrill. Merrill Taylor is our challenge. Meryl, we'd like to find out a little bit about you. Well, I live at Carrenbow, Graham, mm -hmm. and I'm married and I have two daughters, 11 and 8. And would you like to win thousands of dollars oh, on blankety blanks? <laughs> well, we'll start. A or B, you're the challenger. B, thank you. B, yes. everybody plays. Round one, every match is worth a point. Confucius say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Confucius say, our true friend is someone who blanks you when you have our cold. Uh, All right, I know. <laughs> Confucius say a true friend is someone who blanks you when you have a cold. C O L D. Doesn't say a cold what? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> the bullet's in her yet. <laughs> Confucius say a true friend is someone who blanks you when you have a cold. That's a true friend. I know I've got a good joke about snake bites and finding out who your friends are, but I don't think I can use that. No, you, oh, on the, you made it on the <laughs> bottom. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> no, no. Are you in, Pig? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I see, right. Then. They quickly took him down a peg by blanking on his wooden leg. Nolene, what's the going on here? Oh, I had two answers. We'll use the best one. I will. Confucius say, a true friend is someone who blanks you when you have a cold. <laughs> um, doses you. Doses you. Gives you a dose. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, my, no, no. When I'm ill, someone always gives me a dose of something. <laughs> yes, Barry. Well, seriously, folks, I thought it might warm you when you had a cold. Warms you, not doses. Well, 
<laughs> I'll give you my second answer. All right. Nurses you. Nurses you. Is that that's not the same as doses? Uh, well, I think this would be a match. I me. think it, it would be. It, it rubs you. Rubs you. Know, you. Your, your vapor rub on your. No, dose. I don't. It's you're not. A person. You're Sorry. A no, you don't drink a rub. You drink a dose. Yeah. Peggy, what do we? <laughs> I think I meant that. I don't know. What do we have from you, oh, Peggy? I, I agree. When you have a cold, you know, all the dosing, all doesn't it? You have to be rubbed. You good rub. Yeah. Up the wrong way. You can't catch a rub. You um, can't catch a rub. Nurses, nurses is not no. doses. John, visits a lovely answer. Visits a very altruistic <laughs> answer from John Paul Young. Tarzan's getting really weird. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't read the rest of it yet. Tarzan's getting really weird. In his new movie, he swings on a vine, beats his chest and goes, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Oh, that hurt. He does all that, and then he makes a funny face and blanks his loincloth. <laughs> Tarzan's getting really weird. In his new movie, he swings on a vine, beats his chest, goes, ah, ah, ah. Then he makes a funny face and blanks his loincloth. How are they written? How are they written? Ah, 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 ah. It's got a hit. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> yes, go C, C minus, A, C. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. See, he can read music too. You do it for us, John. Ah. <laughs> I like mine better. <laughs> See, I couldn't do all of it because I've got to hold this microphone. If I. Oh, I could, I spoke it. I'll hold it, go on. That's right. <clears throat> Oh, that's a horse. <laughs> 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 would, would you like me to do a lark in the bushes? <laughs> <laughs> I could give you a quick crow. <laughs> <laughs> Have I, who did it? Is everybody in? Oh, <laughs> About an hour ago. <laughs> Have I been over there yet? No. <laughs> Tarzan's getting really weird. In his new movie, he swings on a vine, beats his chest, goes, uh, uh, and blanks his loincloth. Loses. Loses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, loses. Bit late. I'm not up to this. I'm too old to be bending down near Te Peggy Tapano and doing horses into microphones. I really am. Also, it ruins the line of your decks. Barry, and what the happened? soles of your shoes. And the <laughs> soles of your shoes. Well, I thought the way you went, uh, ah, ah, the way I thought he might drop his loincloth. Is that a match? Drops and loses is a match. Nolini. He tore it. He tears his loincloth. Yes, in the not enthusiasm, match, not a match. No. He tears it before he chews. <laughs> well, he's a bit strange. He said he was strange. <laughs> And a contortionist. And a contortionist. <laughs> Tarzan swings, Tarzan falls, Tarzan's here tonight. <laughs> the boy stood on the burning deck. Peggy. He twists. Twists his lawn. Oh, 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 how nasty for him. Poor Jane. Having she watched... said, how about it tonight? He said, no, I've twisted me lawn. <laughs> Having watched you doing that, ah, uh, and, and looking, I thought, thought he might need to change his <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> John Paul takes off takes his, off loin his loincloth. Takes off his losers. Yeah. Oh. Do you think? Yes, perhaps it is. Well, uh, uh, Tony well, Lovestash uh, Twiller is a surprising producer. Every now and then, <laughs> he comes up with a borderline and makes it work. We'll have an argument and uh, be back soon to play Blankety Blanks. But please stay with us, because we love you dearly. Walk out with... Errol, A or B? Um, B, please. B. This is uh, round two. And everybody plays by the looks of things. Yes. During the big inspection, the colonel blanked on the general's shoes. <laughs> During the big inspection, the colonel blanked on the general's shoes. A variety of cameras in this program. A little smile on each one if you work it properly. I wish Alan would work it properly. You had a little esoteric bit there for upstairs. 
Come on, Barry, shove it in. Right. During the big inspection, the Colonel blanked on the General's shoes. Stood. Stood. Sometimes when they end in ED, perhaps the answer should end in ED, but a lot of people up here, I bet, haven't got stood. Ba stood, Barry? Well, no. for once, yes. <laughs> Blimey! <laughs> what do I know? Don't listen to me. Now, Lynn. Similar, Graham. Very similar. Truly? No, no. Rode, because he was on horseback. He rode on the jet. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was on a horse. Would you say that was a match? Yes. Trod. Definitely. Yeah. Trod. Stood and trod. Peggy. Trod and stood and... Trod, trod. is... Oh! Uh, trod? John, don't tell me you've got no, a... Jumped on the, on the general <laughs> shoes. See, I don't know anything about the game after all. I didn't think there'd be a trod and there were lots of treading going on there. Cyril, oh, Cyril said. Oh, I love oh, Cyril. Oh, I love it's a Cyril. Cyril. Yes. It's, if you've never seen this program before, it's a character we do called Cyril. It's my middle name. It truly is my middle name. Graham Cyril Kennedy. <laughs> Cyril said to the doctor, mm, you must have my medical report mixed up with someone else's. It's perfectly obvious I'm not blank. <laughs> Cyril said, Barry, you don't play. No, but keep it quiet. Barry. <laughs> I said to Barry, you don't play. He said, no, but keep it quiet. Barry doesn't play in this round. Cyril said to the doctor, you must have my medical report mixed up with someone else's. It's perfectly obvious I'm not blank. I think we all know this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Haven't you put that? What? Oh, all right, all right, all right. Cyril said to the doctor, you must have my medical report mixed up with someone else's. It's perfectly obvious I'm not blank. Nuts. N nuts. Mm. Perfectly obvious I'm not nuts. <laughs> nuts. You need four to win, uh, Andrew. Nuts. I would never have put nuts, I don't think. <laughs> perfectly obvious. See, he was x-rayed. Would they find out that you were... You had a mental problem from an ex Well, they probably could, I don't yes, know. You don't no. play anyway, Barry. No. <laughs> <laughs> if he'd gone to a psychiatrist, I would have said Yes, he went, just went to a doctor. specialised in something. And this was <laughs> just a medical... Just a medical doctor. He was GP and was pregnant. Pregnant, I thought, was the definitive answer. Well, the way he speaks, I would say gay. <laughs> it's perfectly obvious I'm not gay. Oh, what did everyone else have? Pregnant. Pregnant, yeah. pregnant. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. Meryl, come up. I'm... I don't know. Yeah. Andrew Yin doesn't go home with a lot of money. He should have, because he played Supermatch several times. But uh, you have $100, and thank you for playing Blankety Blanks, Andrew. You, goodbye. Uh, Wave goodbye to uh, Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. <laughs> How does it feel to be champion? Oh, lovely. Is thank it? you. Yes. yes. You could win $1,000. I hope so. Thank you. But we're not going to give you a chance at that yet because we have to move a few uh, products here. Well, after we've done that, we'll come back and play Super Match with Meryl Taylor and see if she wins a lot of money. <laughs> Meryl, we polled a recent studio audience and discovered their most frequent answer to this. Animal blank. Now, if you come up with the answer they came up with most often, you receive $100. If you match their second most frequent response, you receive $50. Third, $25 if you match it. Now, I'm sure you know by now that you're allowed to pick any of these three celebrities uh, for some help. Oh, I'll have Dave, please. Animal crackers. Animal crackers in my suit. Yes, I thought animal crackers. And Peggy. Peggy. Um, uh, animal Kingdom. Oh, famous television program. Stuart, Stuart. Stuart Wagstar. Just a moment, Stuart. They're, they're still clapping. They're finished. Animal magnetism. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes, and if you have any advice on that, <laughs> would you please write to Stuart? He's never discovered the secret of the animal magnetism. Oh, the way you said it. You like that? Animal magnetism. Blimey. Well, now, we've got uh, animal crackers, animal kingdom, animal magnetism. I don't know whether there's room up there to put magnetism. No. Um, but And you may have a better idea. Well, I was going to say animal doctor, but... Um, animal doctor. Is that all right? No, I think I'll say animal kingdom, please. Animal kingdom. All right. <laughs> we'll find out. As usual, we'll start at the bottom and ask Peter the Phantom Puller to reveal the $25 answer. Thanks, Peter. Animal Kingdom. That's what you asked for and that's what you got. Let's find out what was under the $50 response, Peter. 
animal crackers, and the $100 response was what? Close to yours. Very near. <laughs> oh, of course, animal lover in meaning, yeah. Yes. Oh, and none of us thought of that. You've won $25 now, you play for 10 times that amount. $250, which is better than a kick in the ankle. But you must match one of our celebrities precisely. Now, who would you like? Oh, I'll have Stuart, please. Stuart, yeah. yeah. Can right. Him, you, you can trust Stuart. I hope so. I can you? you can. Yeah. I think you can. From what I know, Stuart, you could certainly trust him. <laughs> <laughs> fruit blank. F-R-U-I-T. Fruit blank. <laughs> Special question there for Stuart. Oh, he's finished. You see, Stuart works under the principle that the first thing you think of, you write down. Now, the first thing he thought of, he wrote. Let's hope you think of it too. Uh, tree. Fruit tree. Fruit tree. Well, there is a connection, but unfortunately, the thing that I wrote lives in a fruit tree, a fruit fly. A fruit fly. I'm sorry. That's all right. No, don't, don't I'm worry. I'm not apologising to you. <laughs> No, all right, Stuart. Fruit fly. Yes, Stuart went straight for the fly. Uh, let's say hello to Alan Davis, who's our new challenger. Alan, we'd like to hear a bit about you. Uh, well, I'm 28 years old, married with um, two children, and I'm currently employed with Fubs Furniture. Fubs! Oh, on the Pacific Highway. I pass them every night on the way here to work. That's right. Fubs. They sell some good stuff in amongst all that Very stuff. Very fine traditional furniture. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good store. Having said that, I'll be around to see you next <laughs> Monday. <laughs> a or B, Alan? A, please. A, round one. Everybody plays. Every match is worth a point. Dumb Dora couldn't find her bowling ball. She's dumb, this girl. Dumb Dora couldn't find her bowling ball, so she rolled a blank down the alley. Dumb Dora. Oh, no, I tell you what, get it under some tension and then let it go. <laughs> That's a crook machine. That, that cartridge machine has been out for two weeks. Dumb Dora couldn't find her bowling ball, so she rolled a blank down the alley. Boing, ba doing, boing. Boing, ba doing, boing. Boing, ba doing, boing. Monotonous, isn't it? Boing, ba doing, boing. Boing, ba doing, boing. Come on, Elton John. John Paul Young. I'll give it to you again. Dumb Dora yeah. couldn't find her bowling ball, so she rolled a blank down the alley. <laughs> I think it would be <laughs> anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Dumb Dora couldn't find her bowling ball, so she rolled a blank down the alley. Rolling a pin? Well, you mean, yes, uh, a, a bowling pin instead of a ball. Help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you'll get it. I thought she might roll a friend down there. Roll a friend. <laughs> yes, when in doubt, roll a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Nolene. Well, I didn't write pin. I didn't. I don't expect anyone's written pin. No, I wrote pudding. <laughs> oh, yes, you can see that. Um, yes, one of those round Christmas pudding. Exactly rolling that down. Didn't roll a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Ro don't. My next door neighbour went to a bowling alley the other night, you know, and he's so bald he bent down to tie his shoelace, somebody stuck their fingers up his nostrils and got a strike. <laughs> Dave beat me to it. I was going to wait till I got down there and do a Kojak joke. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Dave. Orange, I put. That's the only thing I an orange. Rolled an orange down the bowling alley. Peggy. Well, she was very dumb. She, she picked up dumb. a balloon. A balloon and, and a balloon it floated down the alley. A go-go nut. A coconut. A coconut from Stuart and John has written... Telly Savalas's head. See, no one came up with a pin, although it was a, a nice idea. Would be hard to roll down an alley. But then she was dumb. When the teacher caught little Johnny... <laughs> ...streaking, she sent him home with a note glued to his blank. <laughs> When the teacher caught little Johnny streaking, she sent him home with a note glued to his blank agony. <laughs> you really think that, Peggy? Well, well why not? Well, anyone who's glue anything to anything is a bit sadistic. I think so. Nolene and Barry are still painting their answer. 
we're just waiting on them now. Boing, ba boing. boing. <laughs> When the teacher caught little Johnny streaking, she sent him home with a note glued to his blank. His chest. His chest. His chest. Do we have a chest up here? We Actually, we have a very good chest up here because Barry goes to a gymnasium near the boulevard. That's certainly true. I often it? see him in the foyer where he's just been to gym. Yes. <laughs> Is that the end of that story? <laughs> Why did they laugh? I saw you in the foyer the other day. You did, yes. I looked very healthy. You did? I thought he might glue the note to his end. Glued a note to his end? <laughs> Nolene? Well, it was the schoolboy thing, you see, yes. that made me think yes. of his glow bite. That's a suitcase, in uh, case you don't know. Oh, is it? Yes. A glow bite? A glow bite, yes. Oh, I thought it was a bite from a little ringworm thing. I thought you might think something like that. <laughs> Dave. Glowworm. Well, Meryl doesn't know how permissive we are in this show, does she? No, you're allowed to say bottom. D yeah. But, oh, well, I don't know <laughs> yeah. what you're allowed to say bum. Oh. Yes, you are, actually. What did you have, Peg? Oh, I thought she wanted to cover him up a bit. Bottom, so see? Little bottom. Stuart. I think he'd got dressed again, hadn't he, after he'd streaked he doesn't or say. whatever. So I'd put on his face, because it's the first Glued thing on your face. Yes. Cool. Posterior. Posterior. See, John Paul Young was even nicer. I would like to continue with this because I'm fun. I'm, I'm fond of talking about uh, all the things we talk about in Blankety Blanks, but I can't because it's good night time. Join us again soon for Blankety Blanks. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, my darlings. Good night, my All prices are moved by Grace Brothers Removals, the professionals. Interstate artists fly and set, and we try harder, drive Avis. Whilst in Sydney, Graham Kennedy chooses to stay at the Boulevard Hotel, 90 William Street, King's Cross. Coming up next.